Hi, it's Kerntex here with a video about stabilizing Intel 12th, 13th and 14th generation CPUs. What do I mean by stabilizing? Well, it seems that by default, these generation CPUs, and I believe possibly 11th generation, um, come with motherboards that are set to overclock the CPU by default. I've been building PC since the late 80s. The first uh, machine I put together was a 286. I was quite surprised to find out when I bought the 12th generation CPU um, a few years ago to find out that the defaults in the BIOS were to overclock the machine. Found out that you could actually set it to Intel defaults. Tried that. That didn't work. I was still getting stability issues. I even tried the Intel Extreme Tuning Utility, the XTU utility. That seemed to want to boost parameters, which again still didn't resolve the problem. Uh, eventually, with a lot of reading on the internet, I did finally manage to get that 12th series CPU, which is a 12900K. Uh, I did manage to get it stable under all conditions. Now, I use Linux, so my testing methodology involves compiling because I use Gen 2, so it's a lot of compiling I do on the machine and to make sure that all cores are being used for a certain amount of time I use Povray which is um, a ray tracing program, it ray traces using software. Now I was finding that in Windows things like Cinebench which seems to be quite popular and other tools even the Intel XTU utility were exposing the fact that uh, well Cinebench wasn't exposing any problem with the CPU. It was running and it seemed to be running fine and that was it. The Intel Extreme Tuning Utility exposed that the CPU was throttling. Now the Asus motherboards, the Z690 um, Wi-Fi D4 I've got, has got a little red light on the motherboard and then it lights up when the CPU is throttling. So I could see it was throttling during the time that Cinebench was running, Cinebench 23. Um, as I say, the Intel XTU exposed that, it shows it on one of the graphs. While I was compiling, I could see that happening. While I was rendering in Linux with Povray, I could see it was also throttling. And indeed, within Linux, I could see that occasionally rendering would fail. Um, the render window would disappear, but you could still hear the CPU was doing work in the background, which shouldn't happen. And also compiling was sometimes fail, um, and I suspect it was also creating binaries that weren't all that good either because I had some packages that were failing for unknown reasons even though they'd compiled apparently correctly. Because I do these videos and I transcode and render them on this machine, the 13th generation came out, it was f roughly 50% faster than 12th generation, so I decided to, do th to buy that, plug it into the motherboard it was compatible similar sort of problems in fact they're worse and i believe that's because the um, power limits on the 13th gen chip are unlocked i think i'm right in saying that so there's effectively no limit as to how much power the chip would take and i, I just could not get that, that that chip stable at all um so to cut a long story short i've come to the situation where i fathomed out that it must be something to do with the power limits and just the other week I came across this Reddit post which came with the information that I couldn't find out. Now this information here, the, the upper limit for the turbo power is published, it's 253 watts. So I think the base power is 125 watts for 13th gen and the upper limit for the turbo power is 253 watts. This is a bit of information I couldn't find, what to set the maximum uh, current allowance for um, and also interesting these instructions here also tell you to set the SVID um, on the Asus Z790 boards which is now what this 13th gen is sitting in um, to set it to the typical scenario so I tried this rebooted and it works perfectly there's no throttling whatsoever the CPU is running a lot cooler. The maximum I've seen it go to is 85, 86 degrees centigrade. Um, and it's as stable as a rock. And it just goes to show that the um, motherboards are 
being released today with uh, overclocking enabled is just taking the life out of everybody. It took life out of me. It's wasted a lot of my time trying to get it working. Uh, there's countless posts on the internet with people trying to get their um, system stable, people trying to undervolt and underclock and overclock and whatnot. And it's just absolute madness it is. And that's why I call this video an outrage because it is an outrage. It, these manufacturers should not be selling um, hardware that's optimized to the absolute peak where um, you probably need some sort of cooling system that's the size of the PC itself to effectively cool the CPU to, to make it run at those, those optimized levels. The AI technology clearly doesn't work uh, because people are still having problems. Uh, I don't know what the situation is with MSI and, and uh, Gigabyte. I presume it's the same. But there's several aspects here. The fact that these motherboards are being released with this overclocking by default is wrong. The fact that certain software can run without exposing the fact that um, there's throttling going on. So I wouldn't know that if I was, for example, running Cinebench and I didn't have a light on the PC, I wouldn't know that Cinebench was causing throttling. So anyway, yeah, I tried this um, and as I say, it worked perfectly. So what I just thought I'd do is to, I didn't want to take the glory away from the guy who's posted this Reddit board so I'm showing you the information he's put here like so I'd already fathomed out some of this but he's obviously found uh, the information that um, nailed this down to, to create a stable machine if you read this reddit page there's a few um, posts on it I think there's about 300 comments on this so there's a lot of people that are quite interested in this um, he basically found the documentation that um, gives this information which is a bit that I couldn't find um, anywhere for 13th gen this is I presume the 14th generation may be the same specifically this is for 14900 I think it is um, well, in fact it, yeah it does look like the 3900 and the 4900k but the documentation which is at this link here and I'll paste this link and I'll also paste the link to the same documentation for the gen uh, 12th generation um, CPUs as well as the link to this reddit page um, it, it shows this information here the 253 watts maximum for the short duration long duration turbo as well as the um, uh, maximum amperage and it shows it for all different models so if you're if you've got like a I don't know a 12700k uh, CPU that you want to know the figures for to enable it to run stable then um, you can look at that link and find out this information and he's got a few screenshots here with you know what to do he's even got screenshots for gigabyte motherboard as well but there's no information for um, MSI motherboards so you'd have to uh, know your motherboard or find that information out as to what to set but I guess if you look for similar settings to what's placed here you can see this says oops um, you can see this says set package power limit one, whereas on the Asus it's set short duration turbo power. So I guess as long as you kind of make out what the um, what the uh, settings are called and also what range and what parameters they take, you could probably work it out. Um, so yeah, I thought what I'd do is I'd show you how I do it on this Z690. So just to be clear, I've got a 13900K. CPU in a Asus Z790 um, Wi-Fi D4 uh, Strix motherboard. Um, so the way I test it, this is Linux by the way, it's not Windows, this is Linux. You can, well, certainly with some default tools or tools that are easy to get hold of, you can monitor what's going on in the CPU and there's command line tools that you can um, used to monitor what's going on with the CPU so this is called hard info it's one of the GNOME utilities and you can see it shows immediately what the temperatures are of the core in fact it's all the temperatures of the sensors in the system but in particular we're interested in the package ID temperature so it's the overall package uh, temperature and individual cores I don't know exactly why these cores jump but they jump in a pattern these ones here that jumping up by one are the efficient cores 
and the ones that are jumping up by four at a time are the performance cores. So you can see up to 32 um, is those between there and there is the performance cores and 33 to 47 is the efficiency cores. So you don't get to see each individual uh, hyper thread on the performance cores, just the actual core itself. Um, and also from the command line, there's some um, things you look, can look at. I've put them in shell, um, some shell scripts just to enable them to be monitored easily. But there's one where you can watch the scaling. Um, I'm not sure if I find it that reliable. So whether it's flicking up to the highest um, frequency or not, um, just for a moment and then scaling down I'm not sure but I've never seen it actually max out to what it's set to in the motherboard um, so I'm not sure exactly how to interpret that but that's the code that I've used for that uh, shell script there and it just displays all the um, I haven't got the execute bit on this it just displays all the scaling frequency so you'll see these be moving around it just up, i've set it to update or use the default of two seconds so it just updates and the highlighted ones are the numbers that change just to draw your eyes so you can see these efficiency cores down here are not changing they're just stuck at the base 800 megahertz whereas performance cores are well, there's a couple there stuck at a base 800 megahertz and they're moving around so there's things going on in the background obviously there's windows open i'm recording this on this machine at the moment um, so that's that. The other one which is uh, even more useful is this um, throttle one. So I've got one called throttle count and this just monitors the uh, number of times that each core um, hits the 100 degree temperature and causes the internal logic to throttle back that core. So if I actually run that now You'll see at the moment I've just turned on the machine, displayed the um, web page that you've been watching, and you can see n none of these cores. So the first number is the core number. So the first um, 16 are the first eight cores. So each of them are hyperthread. So these are this is the first core, hyperthread zero and one. Second core, hyperthread zero and one, and so on. And then from 17 onward is the 16. Um, efficiency cores. You can see there's nothing going on there at the moment. So like I say, what I'll do is either do some compiling, but a quick way to um, get all the cores running, because obviously compiling, you might only get one thread being used or four threads being used, and it's not reliable, and those threads might jump around on different cores, and you, you've got no control over it. With the um, rendering, it's easy to control and just flood the cores with um, processing that needs to be done. And it's obviously intensive processing because it's calculations, it's numerical calculations. As you imagine, ray tracing is quite computationally intensive. So it's a good way of really hammering the CPU. So what I've done with this machine is I've reset all the BIOS parameters. I've trained it with the AI, AI optimization for about 30 minutes or so. I've set that and I've rebooted and this is what you're looking at at the moment. So what you're looking at at the moment is the machine running with the, AI, the ASUS AI optimization running. So what I'm going to do is I'll just show you this code I've got for this script to run the um, benchmark. It's the Povray benchmark standard. The only difference is I've change to this. If you look at the benchmark, if you download Povray 3.7, um, there's some information on the website on how to run the benchmark. So I've just tweaked it slightly to, so that you can see the rendering being processed as it's uh, being done. Otherwise, you just get a prompt there with nothing much going on. And I've set the width and height of the um, image to be 1080. So that's the height of the screen you're looking at. Um, and because it's a square image, I've set the width to uh, 1080 as well. Otherwise, the whole image doesn't get rendered correctly. It gets chopped off top and bottom if I set that to 1920. The, reason, the default is 512 by 512. The reason I've changed it is because 512 by 512 on, on a machine like this, it's just too fast. It you know, only renders for a few seconds as far as I can remember. Uh, in fact, if I 
try it, you can see how quick it does render. If I just change into that directory and then run this, but change the width and height to 512, which as I say is the default. The other default is the that it's not rendered to a graphical output. Okay, it goes on to the other screen always. Um, well, straight away I can see while I'm running this, the little red lights come on, so it's already throttled before, you know, virtually as it started. So that's the image that is the benchmark for Povray, which like I say, you normally don't see, okay, it's 20 seconds, so it's not, not as quick as I thought it was, but it's still a bit too rapid for the CPU to actually get warm properly. Um, so that's the only thing I've changed, as I say, I've um, changed the resolution and I think it's that one there, changed that to plus V so that it's displayed on the screen. So if I quickly go back to this tab, you'll see there's one core there that's throttled, that one there's throttled and that one there's throttled. So already we've got three cores that are throttled, um, a total of about 600 times in total in, in 20 seconds. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to run this benchmark now, let it run the whole way through, uh, I'll time it, and uh, well, that, oh yeah, I've got to bash, because I haven't got the uh, execute bit set, so if I get that running, I'll just bring this over here, I'll leave that there, you can see the temperatures here, the package is already at 90 degrees, a lot of these are above 80 degrees, some are above 90 degrees, that one there is going to 96 already, the package has gone at 96 and if I switch to the throttle view you can see consistently that th uh, that core there and that core there are ham being hammered um, and this is with the AI turned on, this should not be happening with the AI turned on. Another aspect with this is that the red light is not coming on the motherboard and yet it's still throttling. So that uh, that red light is not reliable on the motherboard. Um, this is the kernel. This is the Linux kernel monitoring the cores of the CPU. And there are specific points in this rendering where that will jump a lot. Like there, it's just jumped quite a substantial amount. And you can see other cores are being hit now. So you can see now I've probably got about getting on for two and a half thousand um, throttle uh, events that have occurred in just about a minute or so. You can see that's one minute and two seconds that's that's taken. So what I tend to do with this is I'll run this three times just to give it a good hammering. Um, make sure that the CPU is warmed up because obviously as it warms up more the case warms up as it's hotter it means that the cores are going to throttle back a bit more um, if the AI processor reduces the actual frequency of the cores that's going to be reduced a little bit more so it should in theory mean that this benchmark might take a little bit longer maybe you know a fraction of a second longer each time because the whole machine's getting warmer um, but as you can see, the the throttling still occurring. It's um, it's just not good, and and it's like like I say, although the um, that you can see these events occurring, the the light on the motherboard is not um, lighting up. So if I was running Cinebench or something that wasn't displaying this these throttling events. I would think that my motherboard is set up correctly and it's running at its best. And that's what I think with a lot of the posts I read on the internet. People are saying, oh yeah, I've set it up and I've tweaked this, tweaked that, and it's running sweet and it's running fast and it's all sweet and dandy. And I bet a lot of the time it isn't. These these events aren't being exposed. Right, the red lights actually come on now at the beginning of this render, but it's gone off again. So it seems like at some point it's something specific that's in this benchmark that's making the um, CPU overheat on certain cores and the internal limiter is, is coming in. So again it's it's crazy that the motherboard is not limiting the CPU, that the CPU is having to protect itself to stop itself, set, well basically setting itself on fire, which is what would happen if these limits weren't 
set on the CPU and and the other question is how long would this CPU last for if it's continually um, hitting this 100 degree mark all the time as I say I do rendering for testing I do compiling weekly um, and I do transcoding and rendering video files uh, for my videos quite regularly um, so you know I dread to think how long the CPU would last um, if if I let it run wild like it does so anyway now you can see that you know it's not a good situation basically in, in roughly three minutes I've had uh, probably getting on for four thousand or so maybe three and a half thousand uh, sorry no five thousand um, events on most of the cores uh, not all of them but certainly on all the performance cores um, where the supposed AI technology is supposed to have, uh, you know tune this this motherboard to work with this CPU in the best possible way and it clearly hasn't worked and I'm not interested in overclocking I just want a reliable machine that works fast that's all I want so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reboot into the BIOS um, and I'll gonna well I'm actually gonna show some slides um, I couldn't record the BIOS because I normally record on this machine that I'm showing you on so because I'm in the BIOS I, I can't record that with the recorder I normally use um, so what I'll do is I'll actually reboot set this up show the slides of what the changes were that I did on this motherboard and then rerun these tests again to show you that um, yeah the settings that are on that web page do indeed work these settings here okay so here's the first screenshot of the BIOS if you can't see this on your Asus motherboard you need to press F7 to get into the advanced mode and you should see this menu coming up um, and the first thing I'm just showing here is about saving your current profile before you overwrite it in case um, the new way doesn't work for you but um, I'm sure it will do so you just go tool in the top menu there and then go down to the Asus user profile and within that that's the screen you'll get there um, you see I've already got three allocated there just go down to profile name type in something that's meaningful to you and then select a slot so I've selected slot 8 it's not assigned to anything in fact I've selected slot 4 there and the second one and then press enter it'll ask you do you want to save to the profile just accept yes and you can see slot 4 there has got the new one with today's date which is the 12th of March 2024 that's just the naming convention I, I use then um, what you'll need to do is to reset the BIOS back to its default so that you can start with all, all the default settings and just modify the ones that are necessary so just press F5 and you'll get this um, pop up up here press OK there and it will warn you um, sorry no yeah press OK there it will load the defaults and then press F10 and it will show you what the changes that are going to be made uh, by loading the defaults so you can see all these DRAM settings that are being set back to auto um, so just click OK there and your machine it might shut down for a few seconds or it may just reboot depending on what settings you've had stored so just um, wait for that to come back up again and then press F8 or delete to um, get back into the BIOS you'll be presented with the um, easy mode screen again so just press F7 again to get back into the advanced mode and then um, press the right hand button or the right hand cursor sorry to get to the AI tweaker menu uh, like that then press enter on the first option where it says AI, AI overclock tuner and if you've got XMP profiles to set select one of them I use the XMP2 because my DRAM's obviously got that um, interesting I forgot to mention that all the settings I tried whether it be the AI 
overclocker or my own settings or you know reading stuff on the internet i could not get the dram to run at the maximum xmp2 value i had to clock it down so what i've got is 4400 um ddr4 and i could never get it to run at that speed i had to knock it down to at least 4000 uh, to get it to work but since i've used these settings here i've been able to use the xmp settings at the default settings without any tweaking at all uh, so I've, I've got the memory running at 4400 uh, i've run mem mem test mem test is built into the um bios although i don't swear by mem test they're not particularly reliable they they'll find out easy to find errors with memory but they're not um totally foolproof so that's something I forgot to mention that was also causing a problem that I couldn't run the memory at its full um, qualified speed, even though it is all also memory that is qualified by the motherboard. Uh, so, yeah, don't understand that. But anyway, it does work, as I say, without the all the optimization set on. So I set mine to XMP2 because that's what I use. And you can see the screen gets updated. Um, then you want to go down to the Asus multi-core enhancement down here. And you can see by default it's let's let's BIOS optimize and optimize and it tells you what it says here, like it tries to optimize all the settings and so on. But what we want to do is to set the settings back to the Intel default turbo core ratio settings. So we do that by pressing enter and picking this option here, disabled enforce all limits and that's set now that's something i'd already tried as i say it's the other setting about the amperage the maximum amperage which was the key one for me um but the next setting i wasn't aware of i didn't even consider changing so maybe this has some bearing on the ov overall effect as well but it's the svid behavior setting here um, and as per that web page it says to set this to typical scenario so if i go into that it says to select this one here. I would probably say the best one would be to set Intel's failsafe um, if you wanted to be doubly sure. But as I say, I have found that this typical scenario um, does seem to work fine. Uh, it does say it trains, trained optimizes SVID behavior to match input parameters such as VRM, VRM load line and target uh, frequencies so it may not be the ideal one there's probably a little bit maybe of overclocking or optimization here but uh, as i say the system does seem to be absolutely stable with it set but if you're in any doubts and maybe you do want to set the intel failsafe i've just gone with what the guy has posted on the uh, internet there on the reddit page so as i say, I've set that to the typical scenario as it says um, then need to scroll down to the uh, internal CPU power management. So it's just often, it's about another screen down. So if you just press the down arrow, you'll get down to this internal CPU power management option. Um, and as you can see that just out of interest, the XMP2 has come up with the correct setting there of 4400. And like I say, that does work correctly. So back to the internal CPU power management, if you press enter on that, you'll get another menu coming up and what you need to do is to scroll down to the CPU core cache stroke current limit max. So that's this setting here. So if I go down to that one and you can see it's set to the absolute maximum of almost 512 amps, which is a crazy amount. Um, so what we'll need to do is to set that to the key value, which has been obtained from the documentation, the Intel documentation. And for this particular processor, the 12, sorry, the 13900K, it's 307 amps as per the Intel documentation. So I type that in there. Then I want to set the long duration power limit. So again, referring to the documentation, that's 253. So put that in. And then the, well, the package power time package power time window doesn't get mentioned but this is mentioned in the documentation it says to set it to 56 seconds so i've actually set that uh, just as another parameter that can be set as per the documentation otherwise as you can see from there 
if I go back, it could be set. I think it goes into the hundreds of seconds is the maximum it can, it can be set to. So I'll just set that to 56. And then the short duration um, package limit, again, for this particular CPU, 3900K, um, that gets set to 253 watts. Then that's all the settings that needs to be set. Press F10 to save the settings. And again, it shows you all the changes um, that are being altered. So you can see these DRAM settings are being set back to the XMP2 profile that the DRAM's got. And press OK and the machine will reboot. And when it's rebooted, go and do your testing and it'll all be fine. What I'm going to do now is get up the um, throttling again. Uh, so I want to do uh, just do bash watch throttle count. So you can see as last time, not really done much, just browsed a few pictures. Um, haven't been on the internet this time, browsed a few pictures, done nothing that's really taxed the CPU. Um, I, you might have even noticed, in fact, that the temperatures aren't even jumping up and down as much. I noticed before when I was recording that the package temperature actually jumped up to 70 odd degrees at one point. Um, one thing I must also say is that one other thing I have changed, which I haven't shown, is I've changed the fan profile. Um, I've got two fans that are plugged into the motherboard. Um, and all I've done is extended their profile so they don't come on uh, till later. So the fans don't come on till the box has reached 30 degrees. And then they just turn the fans on at their absolute minimum, which I think is a 12% duty cycle. Then the next profile is 50% uh, of 50%, uh, sorry, 50 degrees at 50% duty, duty cycle, 75 degrees at 75% duty cycle. And then uh, 85 degrees they switch into a 100 degree due cycle so they're a lot more relaxed uh, they don't come on so quick i've set them for level five in the asus bios so that they come on slower and and uh, reduce speed slower as well so in theory there's actually less air going through the box um, so it should get hotter um, but it's just to keep my ears from being hammered with a, a whoosh of fans every time i move the cursor or do something silly like, um, you know, open a browser or something, not silly, sorry, but any, do anything that might cause a sudden burst of um, CPU activity. The fans don't immediately twitch and come on to maximum speed just for a second or so. It just um, makes it a bit more a bit more sane here. So there's the throttle count. What I'm going to do now is to run the um, uh, Povray benchmark again. And I'll time this again just to show it as a comparison. So if you remember before, it was about a minute and two seconds. I'll run this. Let's bring this over here. And you can see straight away the package temperatures not even hit 80 degrees. In fact, none of the, none of the cores are even reached 80 degrees. I think the highest one is that one there, 77 degrees. Uh, the efficiency cores are certainly quite warm, but not, not hot at all. Let's go to the throttle view. You can see nothing's happened so far and it's almost halfway through the rendering. Uh, the fans are just starting to kick in now, just gradually picking up speed. Um, and what I tend to find is by the time it reaches the end of this rendering, they've just about reached their maximum speed. But as you can see, it's, they're not really needed to be kicked in. I was just, just hit 80 degrees on the package. Yeah, we've got one core there. That's obviously my um, hottest core. So it's nearly reached the end. And you can see we've done one full rendering and there's been no throttling at all. Just let it complete. So that's all successful. Go back and it's only taken two or three seconds longer. But we've had no throttling and it's been well under the maximum of 100, 100 degrees. I, I didn't actually notice what it maxed out as. Uh, but it didn't get anywhere near 100 degrees. If I run that again, so I just always run this at least three times. Um, 
there are a couple of hot spots in this image. It tends to be at the beginning where the sky is being rendered and somewhere near the end where the water is being rendered is where it always seems to catch uh, the system out where it's going to get on one core where it gets it really hot. Um, so, yeah, there's no throttling there again. So I'll just keep an eye on the temperatures a bit more this time. So we can see what the maximum is going to be. So it's got 79 at the moment. Yeah, it's that core there again. 80 degrees. In fact, if we look at this graph here, you can see it's that's the peak there, 80 degrees. It might switch up above 80 towards the end here. No, it doesn't look like it's going to. So it looks like it's been quite reasonable, 80 degrees. We've got no throttling. And again, about a minute and five seconds. So again, you know, for the sake of two or three seconds, which is only, what, 5% longer, it's um, as stable as anything. And I've run some compilation. The ones I normally run, which normally always catch it out, are GCC, the compiler. That normally aborts quite quickly within the first five minutes or so. I think it takes about... Uh, is it about 10, 20 minutes? I can't remember exactly. Uh, Chromium always uh, aborts, but it's normally after about 10 minutes or so, 10, 15 minutes. Um, and that's a longer render. It takes about an hour on this machine. So I'd normally get GCC compiling properly uh, before I have a go at Chromium. Some others that generally catch it out sometimes, WebKit GTK is a good one. Because uh, that uses lots of memory as well. It tends to use about 2 gigabytes per core. So that's a good one to hammer with. Hammer the CPU with. So as you can see again, it's just hitting 79 and twitching into 80. Um, and that's it. It's almost, you know, sort of cruising basically. It's not being raced or hammered or anything. And again, there's no throttling at all. So, yeah, like I say, that post really did it for me with those two extra options that I couldn't find. The SVID one I wasn't aware of, and the maximum amperage was the one one the one the thing that I didn't know what to set to. Um, the wattage, you see that published everywhere about the maximum wattage for the CPUs. So I hope it's been helpful just to spread this message. Um, uh, it'd be a shame to have anybody who's still scratching their head, head or, you know, stressing over trying to get their machine stable you know you sometimes doubt yourself oh, have i bought a dud cpu is a model dud is my uh, cooling solution not adequate uh, so it's good to know that this information is being shared and i just want to do my part in sharing um, that information and showing how i uh, look into assessing whether it's working or not and i believe that the, this way with the linux tools is a, is a bit more um reliable than some of the window methods of the windows methods that i've seen so thanks very much for watching if you found it useful give me a thumbs up on the video subscribe to my channel um click on the little icon in the bottom right um to get information about other videos that i publish goodbye